What's up, sports fans, and welcome back to Rival Talk. As always, your host, Christian, here, and joined by Marcus. Marcus, how are you doing today? I am doing great. It's Friday. Yes, it's Friday, and you got out of that uh, meeting finally, I guess. So. Yes, uh, I, I had to sell some life insurance, but I'm here now. Yep, always fun to have late meetings on Fridays, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so, uh, well, preseason week one's in the books, um, you know, Preseason is not much to talk about, uh, but we still have some some news, uh, some noteworthy news to go over real quick. First off, uh, the jersey I'm wearing right now, wearing it for a purpose. Jamal Adams signed his extension finally. Was never worried about it. You know, there was some drama put out there by the media, but that seems to be par for the norm. And I was never worried I was going to sign because I knew that they were close and the money was just a guaranteed. And thankfully, his mom decided to you know call him up and tell him to sign a deal, so it got done. Uh, four years and seventy million dollars, uh, thirty-eight million guaranteed. So I'm, I think that's a great deal for him. I think I think he's worth it. Yeah, I would say I I was hoping you would pay him more just because I want you guys to be under more salary cap constraints. But uh, yeah, good deal for him. High paid safety, he's worth it. Well, speaking of salary cap, that deal opened up. Uh, Seahawks currently have thirteen million dollars in cap space still for this year. So uh, with that, they should go and get Dwayne Brown extended as well, because kind of going to need him, especially after what we saw from the preseason last week. Yeah, that, that was uh, well, some rough offense there, but you also didn't have Russell Wilson yeah, play, yeah. so we'll, what do you expect? We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, other news, uh, so this the second week of preseason has already started, and we had the game last night with the Eagles and Patriots, and uh, Mac Jones seems to sure be giving Cam Newton a run for his money there. It's, that's something to watch out for there. And I, I figured Mac Jones at some point in the season would be starting, but... Uh, he seems to be doing pretty well and taking over that offense pretty well, so who knows what's going to happen there. Yeah, I tried to keep a close eye on him, obviously, since the Niners were so tied to him for so long. He, he does look pretty good. I mean, it, it, just a dink and dunker, but uh, he's doing it all correctly. Yeah. Uh, not much to do in that Bill Belichick scheme there. Just No. And then uh, Jet, uh, some a more unfortunate injury news. Jets top free agent signing Carl Lawson towards Achilles, so he's done for the year. Uh, yeah. Just unfortunate when you have injuries happen like that at this point during training camp and all that. Uh, and then other news: there's been there's been quite some fights this year in training camps. So I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that you know last year there wasn't really any real preseason training camp, so you know teams are getting at it, but. Some of those joint practices, the Raiders and Rams had a brawl that ended their joint practice. I know John Gruen was furious about that. Um, I'd, I'd be willing to wager money that Jalen Ramsey was somehow involved in that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then Antonio Brown, you know, can't go a season about this guy making headlines. He just straight on sucker punched some guy in practice. So, uh, you know, always great to see Antonio Brown back in the headlines. <laughs> Yeah, I know we both kind of wanted him on our respective squads last year, but the, I'm just I'm glad to not deal with it, honestly. Yeah, yeah, and ne- neither of us need him at this point anyway, so. Nope. So, yeah, that's that's really all the news we got so far. Um, so, with that, Marcus, you want to discuss what you saw from the Niners' first preseason game and look ahead to the yeah. next one? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge preseason guy, but I, I did actually record and watch the entire game. Uh, I was busy the night of at a Garth Brooks concert. Oh, it was yeah. awful, but it was a present for the wife. And good, but, good, uh, good beer, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ten dollar beers. But uh, yeah, I, so I did. I actually I recorded and watched the whole thing. I I think Trey Lance looked all right. I don't. Uh, he, he had a really bad. Uh, the end of his second quarter, I think he kind of got a little antsy. He looked way different than he did at the beginning of it. Uh, it's just he's not ready yet. I'm I'm a full on Jimmy Garoppolo supporter still at this point, and I I would say he's going to start and play every game this year unless he gets hurt. Uh, but I do like what I saw from Trey Lance. Uh, the second team offensive line and the four drops by wide receivers certainly didn't help, but he. He did hit an 80-yard pass that Jimmy Garoppolo could never dream of hitting, so there's that. Yeah. That's uh, That was good to see. Uh, besides that, I loved what I saw out of this guy. He's a cornerback uh, from Oregon named Diamador Lenore, hmm. and he was literally glued to the wide receivers the entire night. He played almost every snap, and he looks way better than our third uh uh, third round quarterback Ambry Thomas. He's already leapfrogged him, leapfrogged him in the on the depth chart, and he looks to be our third cornerback right now, and he looks really good. So I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, yeah. Besides that, it's just 
I didn't see anything that stuck out one way or the other. It's just preseason. Yeah. yeah. So what do you got for the upcoming game then? Who's who you guys facing this next game? Uh, well, you're going to have to tell me because I don't even pay attention to preseason. Oh, well, I don't even <laughs> yeah, know. You, <laughs> well. you, you put me on the spot. Uh, I, I literally don't pay attention to it until the day of. It's preseason sports are not my bag. <laughs> All right, and how about this? Tell me, what are you going to be looking for in this preseason game? That's, that's, yeah, that's what I should say. What are you looking yes, for? I definitely yeah. will be looking for, I want to see the, the second string offensive linemen play better than they did in the first game because it was just, it was awful. Trey Lance was under under pressure every every time he went back. And I, I'm i worried about the offensive line a little bit. I think our first stringers are fine or even more than fine. But if we have one or two injuries, there's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. Not one of the second string guys looks even average right now. And I'm, I'm worried about that, I, as anybody would be. You need some depth on the offensive line definitely. at least. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to see Trey Lance again, obviously, just uh, be more consistent. If he, if he starts good, I want him to finish good, even with, uh, you know, there was there were problems, there were drops, and the offensive line looked bad. But I, I just, I feel like he pressed a little bit after his uh, initial hot start. Mm-hmm. And I, he just, it's all mental right now, yeah, just yeah. like anybody. First game, so. And he has, he, yeah, that. and he hasn't played football in quite a while. That North, North oh, Dakota yeah, team yeah. didn't, mm-hmm. yeah, didn't play, and. And, and it was a smaller school, so it's just it's going to take some time for him. Right? So I just kind of want to see him again and just see how he reacts to that first game. Uh, besides that, I, I just will be watching the defense. Uh, the starters are already set basically everywhere, but I want to see how the depth on defense plays again. I think we got a lot of depth on the defensive line, linebacker and cornerback. Uh, even if it's inexperienced depth, there's I, I like the depth. So I just want to see how they play. Uh, Safety though is kind of a concern. We got a lot of injuries there. We got one, our free starting free safety Jimmy Ward is a, a shoe in, and he's a he's, you can pencil him in. But after mm-hmm. that, it's kind of a jumbled mess. And yeah, I'm just seeing who that second guy. I think it's going to be a guy named Tavon Wilson, who actually is a 10 year veteran, but we just signed him, you know, before the season uh, started. Uh, J- Jaquis- Jaquaski Tart has a, toe, a turf toe as usual. He's hurt, so he might start on the, the injured reserve designated to return. Tart's one I felt if, if he could stay healthy, he'd be a really good safety, I feel like. Yeah, he's a stud, but he just is, he literally is never healthy. And mm-hmm. I don't expect him to be, honestly. I'm, I'm actually more uh, looking forward to a guy we drafted named Talanoa Hufunga, who I've mentioned mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. on our, on our, on this podcast before. Uh, He's a, a rookie out of USC. Seems to be a, in the in the mold of a Troy Polamalu, and he actually I forgot to mention him. He had a great game in that first preseason game. He played almost every snap as well, and uh, I think he could take that starting strong safety spot sooner than than later. Actually, hmm. yeah, that's about all I got. Yeah. I just basically, I just want to get through these games healthy. Yeah, and yeah. I don't really yeah. care that's all what anybody preseason. looks like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, you're playing the Chargers, since obviously we both came prepared. We're playing the Chargers uh, in this preseason. Well, that makes sense. We're doing joint practices with them. I should have known that. So, yeah. Um, So, you know, why don't we just, you know, obviously we pick games on the show, so it's preseason. Let's let's start getting the gears going for us picking games. So, give me, give just give me, give me a prediction. (laughs) Just Mm, just for the heck of it. (laughs) Prediction. So, I'm going to say Garoppolo plays a couple series. Trey Lance plays most of the rest of the first half. And Nate Sudfeld will play the entire second half. So based on that, let's see, Herbert, uh, oh, they got Herbert. I don't know who their backup is, but I don't think Herbert will play very much. But I do like our backup quarterbacks better than theirs, I think. So I'm going 49ers, 23, Chargers, 17. All right. Win, win that very important second preseason game. Yeah, this is, this is big time. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right, well, uh, for the Seahawks, so, I mean, I, I watched some of the game, uh, not too much of it, once because none of the starters really play. I think, like, maybe five or six starters total played. Um, yeah. Really, like, yeah, none of the offensive line really played, and we don't have Dwayne Brown out there, so it, it's it's really hard to read because, like, you know, it's, it's mostly just backups. Um, three things that stood out to me from the first game, though, that I, I saw, you know, both when I watch and check in highlights, uh, Daryl Taylor... Jordan Brooks and LJ Collier are, I think, all three in line for a big season. Um, they looked explosive, fast, getting to the quarterback, getting pressure. 
Um, I know Ter- Taylor has been raved about this camp. Um, I know he was injured most of the year last year. I think more of it was just cautionary uh, stuff. But I know he's, he's one I'm really looking forward to this year. I think he's going to add a huge boost to the pass rush on that defensive line. Uh, Jordan Brooks, of course, you know, replacing KJ Wright, basically, although KJ could still possibly come back. And then Collier just developing, you know, the, the, he was a reach when he took him in the first round, but he, I think he's developing and going to be a really good uh, pass rusher for us. Uh, Alex Collins, I've been talking about him a lot uh, the last couple yeah. episodes. Uh, I think he, I think right now he is separating himself and in, in line to get that uh, the backup running back job. Uh, he had a pretty good game, and I've been hearing, continuing hearing rave reviews from come out of camp. So Collins, right now, I think he he's leading that pack for the backup job behind Chris Carson. And finally, my third observation is that the Trey Flowers experiment needs to be over. Right? It, Trey Flowers was getting burnt still in that game against backups. I mean. Nathan Peterman was dropping passes on Trey Flowers. Oh, like, yikes. I, I, yikes. I'm, I'm, I think for me, I'm just, I'm done with the Flowers experiment. We need to move on from him. We've got some more depth there. I, we don't have to hold on to him, so I don't see why we still hold on to him. So, yeah, I, 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 I think he needs to be cut. Um, speaking of being cut, I actually do have a bold prediction to give. Um, I don't, I don't know if it would be too bold at this point, but I feel like for some of us around here, it would probably be bold. I do think Rashad Penny is going to be cut. Um, I just think Alex Collins and uh, DJ Dallas they're they're showing they're showing up a lot and Rashad Penny really has not done much this he's still been battling some injuries and stuff and it's unfortunate when he's healthy sure he you know if we do cut him and he gets healthy go somewhere he probably could be decent but I just think what we have right now I I, I don't see I don't see room for him so I, I so I'm, who's the fourth running back then if you're predicting he gets cut I don't think we hold on to four running backs I think we only have three. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. So, like, like I said, bold prediction. You know, I got, I got to start off early with bold predictions. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. So, the three things I've been looking for this week, then, against the Broncos, another, you know, classic old-time Super Bowl rematch, all that stuff. Um, so, three things I would look for is better offensive line play right away. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, Dwayne Brown hasn't gone to contract yet, so he's not playing. He wouldn't play anyways if he did. Um, Stone Forsyth, he was, he was decent. I'd like to see some improvement from him. Uh, otherwise just all together office line backups or not needs, needs to be, needs to play better. Gino and Alex McGee, they, they were getting lit up left and right. So that, that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, again, still going to keep an eye on this guy. I keep mentioning Alex Collins. I think looking for him to further prove that he is the backup and can run away with that job. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of weird to figure out this year since it's only three preseason games. Usually, you know, the third preseason game would be the game where you're, like, you're looking at things and seeing guys to, you know, play more and yeah. who's got whose job. So, like, I don't know. Is that what the second preseason game is going to be, be now? Or is it, or be yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's kind of hard to figure out. Right now. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, I'll just be looking for Alex Collins still to get more work and uh, to keep running away with that second the backup running back job. And I'm looking to Trey Brown to make some plays, too. I didn't see much of Trey Brown last week. I heard this week he actually made a play on DK Metcalf, and Trey Brown I think is like five ten. I want to say he made, apparently he made a really nice pass breakup on DK Metcalf, so that was interesting to hear. I know he's he's a physical guy, and I think like I've been, I've been raving about him since we drafted him. I think he's going to be a stud one day, so be sure. looking for him to get some more work and make some plays. So let's see if I'm making a prediction. Um, I think I do think Russell plays at least one series this week. Um, that's both a, I think and a, I hope because I'd like to s- see him kind of work a little bit with the new offense, see what it's going to look like a little bit. Um, so I think he plays at least one series. Um, other than that, I don't really see much of any starters anywhere else playing. So, you know, it's, it's kind of just a crapshoot. So uh, I think the pass rush will still be good. It's, there's so much depth there that regardless of backups or not, it's still pretty good. So I think, you know, being at home too, being at, being at Lumen Field, you know, it's just preseason, but it's going to be the first time fans are in Lumen Field since 2019, so that'll be cool to see. So I think given that energy there and everything, I, th- I think the Seahawks will win this one. Uh, I'll say 20, 26-21 Seahawks. All right, fair enough. I got it written down. I don't know what the dogs are picking, but uh, I guess I'll just <laughs> yeah, wait for the right. regular season for that. They don't get any practice. <laughs> All right. Henry doesn't need it. He's the champ. Yeah, yeah, right, sure. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for our division prediction. So I remember just, you know, we kind of just go through the teams and records, and, you know, we don't sure. need to defend ourselves or give any, any explanation. Just 
if people want to question us, they can question us. What else is new? Sure. So we got the AFC and NFC North this week. So Marcus, why don't you start us off with the AFC North? All right. Fourth place, I have the Bengals uh, with a seven and ten record. Uh, third place, I have the Steelers with an eight and nine record. Ooh. Yeah, I'm I'm not liking them all that much. Offensive line and Ben uh, don't think they're going to have a great year there. Okay. Uh, Ravens second by virtue of a tiebreaker at eleven and six, and Browns in first with the same record. But I say they'll somehow win a tiebreaker of some kind. I don't know how. I'm just picking them with the same record, but the Browns will take the division. All right. Well, I'm I'm glad you're saying that because I thought I was going to be crazy. Um, so spoiler alert. Obviously, I have number one, but I'm going to start from number four. Number four, I got the Bengals as well, uh, six and eleven. Number three, I've got the Ravens at ten and seven. I think this is going to be a pretty good division. So Ravens at ten yeah. and seven. Number two, I still think there's a little bit of juice left for them, but this is going to be it for them this year. It for Big Ben, obviously. The Steelers eleven and six, and I might be a little bit crazy saying what the Browns' record's going to be, but the Browns, I think they're due for a huge year. I got them at thirteen and four. So I, well, I th- they're definitely the most talented team they are, in the division. Yeah, I they're the say. most well-rounded. I feel, and I, th- I think correct. Yeah, they're. Yep. They're, they're coming in hot. so yeah, it, They definitely could put it all together. I like their coach, too. It could definitely, be a, yeah. a, one of them years. Yeah. All right, so now for the NFC North. We all know who's going to win the division, so who's got second through fourth? <laughs> yeah. I, in fourth place, I have the Lions at 4-13. and 13. I don't like their coach or their quarterback, so it might be a little rough for them. Uh, third place and uh, second place, I guess I have the same record. I have the Bears and the Vikings both at 8-9. and nine. Hmm. I, I don't think this is going to be a very good division overall, honest, uh, honestly. And I, I am picking the – I don't know who's going to get second and third. I put the Vikings ahead of the Bears. So I st- I'm at the same record, 8-9, and nine, but I have the Vikings ahead of them. So, And then, of course, first I have Green Bay at 13-4, and four, and it could be 14-3 and three or 15-2. and two, Who knows? Yep, the, the Packers' last dance, I guess, as we'll call it. <laughs> Yep, I think it'll be uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to, out of spite, play have one of his best seasons. There's no doubt. Yep, I, I can see it. Yep. Well, uh, I also have the Lions at fourth and at four and thirteen. Um, I do actually like the coach. I think he, I think he can build something good there. But just yeah, they they have a horrible quarterback. I mean, not much supporting cast, not much of defense. Yep. So nothing going for them there. So four and thirteen. Yep. Third, I got the Vikings, 8-9. and nine. Any team with Kirk Cousins, doesn't matter what you have around him, any team with Kirk Cousins is not going to go anywhere. So 8-9, yep. Vikings, or should I call them plexi, pe- plexiglass Kirk Cousins? No. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> no? well, that was something. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, we got the Chicago Bears, 10-7. Uh, and seven. I think I think Justin Fields is going to take over the job early in the season and probably start with Andy Dolan, but at some point early in the season, Justin Fields is going to take it over, and he's going to run away with it, I feel like. So... Uh, yep. They still have a really good defense, so yeah, I got them at ten and seven. And of course, Packers also have them at thirteen and four. Aaron Rodgers, one last, you know, I, when, it's not really a revenge tour, but I guess yeah, spite tour. So we call it. In yeah, spite. I would so, call it a spite tour. Uh, the, the, the NFL's version of the Last Dance, I suppose. So. Yep. All right. So um, with that, obviously we have one division. The last divisions left, so we save the best for last. We'll do the West divisions next episode, and that. That's going to be a fun one to try and figure out. So, Yeah, it's not easy. Nope. All right, so that takes us this week. we got the top five wide receivers. So, Marcus, you want to kick it off? Sure. Uh, in my honorable mention spot, I have a three-way tie. I couldn't choose. But I got uh, Julio, Allen Robinson, and DK Metcalf as kind of a honorable yeah. mention. I know I'm not supposed to question, but DK is an honorable mention. Okay. That's, 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 yeah, that's, a, nine, that's a Niner fan talk. That's a Niner fan talking. Mm. Yep, uh, and yeah, I know, I know, it's unfortunate, but, and then I also just want to add that, and I have a sleeper in a top 10 uh, as a Brandon Ayuk, and uh, if anybody, all the 19 people who have heard this, uh, heard us talk on this thing, or whatever they are, I talk about him a lot, he's one of my favorite players, him and George Kittle, so I think he's going to have a, an awesome year, and maybe throw himself close to that top 10 uh this year or within a couple years, I'm not going to go overboard. But is, it, is that for, right. is that is that a makeup for the Raheem Raheem Mostert thing? Last yeah, week? <laughs> I I still I'm kicking myself for that one. I really didn't. I I, I love Raheem Mostert. I think he's awesome. I threw up a stat on Facebook where he's got the 
the most uh, yards per touch over the last three years of any running back, and he just needs to stay healthy. And I just thought I would sound like an idiot putting him in my top five or honorable mentions, and then you did it and stole all my thunder. So you live and learn. (laughs) Yes, you do. All right, so my top five, I'm going to go five, A.J. Brown of the Tennessee Titans, four, Stephon Diggs, Buffalo Bills, three, D-Hop for the Arizona Cardinals, Two, Tyreek, and one, Devontae Adams. All right, very very interesting. Yep. All right, so for me, for my honorable mentions, I, I guess I also have a three-way tie, you could say. Um, A.J. Brown, uh, Calvin Ridley. I think Calvin Ridley is being slept on a little bit. Yeah. Now, now that Julio's not there, I think he's going to – I mean, he broke out last year. I think he's going to break out even more this year. Yep. Um, then Julio also, as an honorable mention, he's – you got to have Julio at least somewhere there. I know he's older, but, you know, it's Julio, yep. still Julio. All right. Then number five, DK Metcalf. Number four, Tyreek Hill. Number three, Stephon Diggs. Number two, DeAndre Hopkins. And number one, Devontae Adams. Right. We're pretty similar yeah. there, obviously. But yeah, yeah, pretty, a little, few changes, but, yeah. I, I, I just like the A.J. Brown thing this year. I think having a, a veteran alongside of him is going to help him big time. Point, and yep. he's already a stud. Yeah, so. he is. And he does much more than just catch a ball, too. He's, 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 he can be a bit of a gadget guy, too. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that, like I said, I had to put DK there. And that looks like we both got yeah, him right yeah. around five or six. So. Yeah. That's fitting that the Niners fan had him on mention, but I would have him as in top five. So it's, it's about, yeah, it's well, about I, right. It's I had about to return right. the favor from yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, I think that's all we have for this episode. After this, we'll just have one more week of preseason. we got a couple weeks left till season's here. That's kind of crazy to think so about. So we're going to so. have to do a bunch of top five positions next week? Or uh, what, are, what are we doing? Uh, I, well, I, I, ha- I have it all planned out. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's a secret. <laughs> it's, wow. it's a secret. I don't want to spoil it for... The 20 viewers at home. Okay, and me. Don't spoil and, it for me either. Yes, yes, I, I, I won't. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let you go ahead and get out and get home. I know you had a late meeting, so I'm sure you want to get home and drink some bush light tonight. Yep, yep, we got to let the dogs out too. Yep. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> All right, well, uh, thanks for joining, and good to talk to you as always, and I'll talk to you next week probably. Always a pleasure. Talk to you later. All right, bye. All right, so there we have it. Uh, just a reminder, I uh, still have the Amazon gift cards giveaway going on, so you know the deal. Uh, be subscribed to the channel and then share this video or the channel, uh, whatever social you have, Twitter, so, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, either one. Just make sure that I'm aware that you shared it. Uh, and then once you get to 50 subscribers, if I could talk, uh, I'll give away the gift card. So, yeah, uh, as mentioned Preseason's come along, going quickly, and the regular season's almost here. It's it's crazy to think about. So, as always, please like and share the video, hit the subscribe button, and go Hawks!